Okay. Natalie, let's talk a little bit about our next speaker, John Morris. Now, John is a real multifaceted, talented individual. Not only is he a renowned artist, he's a coach. He has a hit talk show. I mean, John is like the modern day renaissance man, right? He does so many incredible things, but I want you to talk about him. Then we're going to invite him and John is going to have the full floor uh, uh, for a few minutes to share his strategies on winning. But Natalie, talk a little bit about John before we give him the full floor. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's such an honor and it's such a pleasure to have John here. I met him years ago, so I've seen him go through things like we've heard from everybody else already throughout the last couple of days. John is an artist. He's a musician. He is a coach, and he has been where most of us has been and has come out of it and is now teaching others how they can use their individual gifts and talents. And, you know, we just talked about how everybody is different. So, you know, being a, a business owner when you're an artist is very different from being a business owner if you're selling computers. But in the end, to him, I believe it's all about the battles we all face, um, to quote one of his books. I'm also excited that he has a show with us on the Los Angeles Tribune. So if you haven't seen that, you know, check it out. But John is just, um, he comes and he will tell you what you need to pay attention to in so many different ways. So I'm excited that he's here. Um, he is from the UK, so I know what time it is there right now because I'm an hour ahead of him, but he made the time for us. So how about we just bring up John and hear what he's got to say today. And you're on mute again. I was just saying, I got my pencil ready, John. We're going to sit back. We're going to give you the full floor. I got my pencil. I got my notebook. I know you're going to bring some gems. So, John Morris, the floor is yours for about five to ten minutes. Thank you very much. And welcome to everybody that is watching this around the world from sunny Scotland, wherever you might be and whatever time this might be for you. Getting to the heart of the psychology of winning, to me, means a psychology where we all win together. For far too long, the psychology of winning has been a mindset conditioned to take, take, take as much of our natural resources and human resources as possible. For many, it's been a selfish mindset where they've sought to basically get their own wants, desires, and wishes, no matter what the cost. And for others, and to their credit, they've desired the betterment of humankind. Now, many of you know that the game of life is designed so only certain people can win. And if you don't believe me, look no further than our schools. Many teachers in our schools teach subjects that they have little to no practical experience in. And this is happening the world over. Subjects are taught in a nice and well-to-do fashion, but fail to teach students the four most fundamental lessons in building a successful life. How to market, how to sell, the fundamentals of money, and how to go deep within to discover the life for themselves rather than always being conditioned. Sadly, the psychology of winning for many people has been one where the rich prospered, where the poor became oppressed, downtrodden, and it wasn't always obvious. A psychology that's left many of our young people confused and void of hope. A psychology that has moved away desperately an attempt to forget our own divine spiritual nature. And as a result, we're now presented with a world in which we find ourselves where more and more people are suffering despite being the most comfortable generation in history. The work that I do with youths and teenagers and in fact people all over the world always inspires different stories. And one thing that I find most interesting is that with every generation that passes, I see two great separations. On the one hand, you've got a generation that are drifting further and further away from their core nature of who they were designed to be. Often in the pursuits of fun and pleasures that they were never designed to have. And for others, I've got great hope for them. Some, like many that have come before them, believe that they have the answers to the world's issues when in actual fact, they have less idea than the people that came before them and often don't realize that they're trying to reinvent the wheel. But for others, they have the right mindset 
in taking up the baton where others have left off. The stark truth is the more and more that we attempt to move away from our divine spirit nature, the more and more we see people crumbling. This can be seen in our youths and our teenagers around the world. It's never been more present than where we are in here in 2021. And I firmly believe that this desire to move away from our divine nature is at its heart one of the largest contributing factors to mental health, gender identity, inner battles, which is actually resulting to so many people taking their own lives. Now, this past weekend, you have heard some phenomenal speakers from around the world who have spoke on many topics, money, wealth, mindset, power, inner engineering, you name it. Events of this nature are often designed with subjects to tickle your ears and steal your fancy and often your cash and do an immensely fine job. But this event has been different. I have been able to tune in from time to time to see the various speakers and to listen to what they've had to say. And it's been an absolute pleasure, and it is an absolute pleasure to be involved with such an event for nearly 300 people that are seeing this live and however many people that are going to see this through the course of time. We all know in our hearts and our minds that there is a deep-rooted crisis within our worldwide community. For many, the answer is to fly off to far and distant lands, into outer space, to pretend these issues aren't happening, and to begin ravaging other planets of their natural resources in much the same way that has been done with our own. The reality is that many of us and our world leaders have spent so much time focusing elsewhere that we're failing to see and take care of what really matters. Many have lost the awe and wonder of what it truly means to be human and to live on this beautiful planet. Many don't know the power that lies within them. And as a result, they've become so pessimistic about everything despite not knowing that it's impossible to know enough to become a skeptic. If you don't believe me, despite the thousands of years of progress, we still don't know a single thing about anything, down to the atomic structure of a blade of grass or even the deep divine spirit that lies within each and every one of us. It's all a mystery, and yet you've got people that are out there crying that they are skeptics. Sadly, looking at this from the flip side, as a result of this pessimistic poverty mindset, many around the world spend their lives in the abyss of poverty, glued to their phones like drug addicts, and don't even realize that many of their health issues that they're facing, especially in the mind, is caused by the very devices that was designed to make our lives better. Now, I do not begrudge technology. In fact, I rather enjoy it but everything must be in balance for it to successfully endure. As I come to a close, I want you to know that the new psychology of winning isn't a difficult one. In fact, it's very, very simple. At its quintessence, it's the very thing we were designed to be. Number one, where we all thrive together, using the gifts and the amazing abilities that each and every single person has to build our communities into self-sufficient entities, remembering that we were all once one. We all travel together in unity, indifferent to people's color, creed, race, or skin. Secondly, where we go deep inside and begin our own practice of inner engineering and self-mastery and live in the awe and wonder and potentials of what could be and the beauties that lie around us. And finally, where we remember what is really important in our pursuits of success, it's not fake money or fake friends who only love you when you're at the top. It is your children, your grandchildren, those friends that were with you when you started out and will be with you at the very end and your significant others. It's your families. Because in the very end, when all the bright lights fade and the attention slips away, that's all we really have. That and the knowledge that we 
are an eternal divine being having a temporary human experience. It is time to leave the mindset of he who dies with the most toys wins mentality and to foster a new one, a one that says, how can we grow together? Now, I'm honestly not certain whether or not tonight will make a difference in terms of what I'm saying, or if like so many who have gone before me, this will simply fall into the realms of auditory and visual noise. But if it does, and if it moves one person to act, then it's been worth it. Wow. And everything that the people of old fought to give a voice to will not have been in vain. It is time, my friends, for all of us to awaken and to help where we can. Thank you. Wow. John Morris, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we are so humbled and honored that you not only joined us, but that you're part of the Los Angeles Tribune family because you embody what this culture and this movement is all about. Thank you so much for being a gracious member of this community and for contributing to the new psychology of winning tour. We're going to take a one-minute break. We're going to come.